surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, sustainer, and controller of all that happens in the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Recently, I was asked by someone as to whether or not we really need the hadith. And I know there is a, an opinion. Some people believe that we don't need the hadith, all we need is the Quran. And their reasoning is since there are authentic hadith as well as weak ones and forged ones, we might as well just leave all the hadith aside in order to ensure that what we choose to do is not questionable. You know, it's similar to brothers and sisters if you know you go to the supermarket and you wanted to buy some corn and there is this big box and there are lots of corn in there and you get some good ones but you find some some that are not good you may in the end say you know what um you're not you will not buy any corn because of the fact that there are some bad ones mixed in the set although if you take your time and you carefully check you may uh, be able to pick out some good ones so they say look since there are weak hadith and forged hadith as well as uh, sahih ones nevertheless in, in order to ensure that whatever you do as Muslims, or whatever we do as Muslims, it is not questionable, let's leave it all aside, and let's stick to what we are sure about, the Qur'an. And of course, we are sure about the Qur'an. So this is their reasoning. But this reasoning is very flawed for a number of reasons. One of them being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in extremely clear terms, has made, it, has made it obligatory on the Muslim to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Now maybe we may differ on what exactly does following the Prophet mean. While he was alive ﷺ, of course following him meant you do what he did. So if you had an issue, you could go directly to him and say, Oh, Messenger of Allah, this is my issue. What should I do? But when he passed away, alayhi salatu wasalam, does it mean that we're no longer obliged to follow him? The scholars of Islam have agreed that the same obligation that the Muslims had, the companions had of following the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, Muslims throughout time will have the same obligation. But once he passed away, of course, we can no longer go directly to him, the Prophet salam, and say, Oh, Messenger of Allah, this is our issue. What guidance do you have for us? We don't have that. We're not able to do that. However, his sunnah or the hadith, as we say, is what, what he has left behind. And following the sunnah, is following the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Quran is very clear on this. So the very people who claim to believe in the Quran and think this is all they need, what will they do about these verses? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nisa, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati'u allaha, O you who believe, obey Allah, obey the Messenger, and those in authority over you. Now it is interesting, brothers and sisters, if you look at this ayah in Surah An-Nisa, you will find that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about obedience to Him, He used the verb obey. Allah. The word atiru is the imperative, a command, obey Allah. When it comes to obedience to Allah, Allah uses the verb, obey Allah. 
When it comes to obedience to his messenger, the verb is repeated. Rasul, Obey the messenger. But when, it, when he mentioned obedience to our leaders, Allah the Exalted did not repeat the verb. He did not say, ulil amri minkum. He simply said, Wa ulil amri minkum. Some scholars say that this is interesting because the use of the verb atiru with Allah the Exalted and with the Prophet السلام, implies that to Allah the Exalted and His Messenger we owe con unconditional and total obedience. While obedience to our leaders and those in authority ulil amri minkum we have to obey them, but our obedience to them is, is conditional. It's conditional. And the condition is that they have to ask us to do what is permissible. And that if ever they demand that we do what is not permissible, we have the right to disobey. But with Allah, ex the exalted and his prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, we have no choice. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never command us to do what is unacceptable. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will never command the people to do what is haram or what is not acceptable either. So that is one interesting point about the verse. But remember the verse says, obey the messenger. Now what does obedience to the messenger mean? You stick only to the Quran? No. Obey the messenger means you follow the instructions he gives. When he was alive, this was direct. Now that he has passed away, the instructions are recorded in the hadith. And so we have no choice really but to follow the instructions of the Prophet as recorded in the hadith. But the verse continues, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If you differ about anything, and the difference here, or the argument here, could be between two Muslims, or between the Muslims and their leaders. If you differ about anything, what is our solution? What is our recourse? Allah says, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ or وَرَسُولِ If you differ in anything, Send it back to Allah and His Messenger. Meaning, send it back, go back to Allah and His Messenger for a final judgment and for final guidance. Allah did not say send it back to Allah alone. He said His Messenger as well. That is better for you. That is best for you and better in the overall, in the bigger picture, in the long run. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Allah says, and we have not sent any messenger except that he should be obeyed by the will, by the leave, the, the izin of Allah, the permission of Allah. So how would they explain these verses? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Subhanallah, this verse is even more telling because it makes obedience to Allah dependent on obedience to the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning, without obedience to the Prophet, no one can be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever obeys the messenger has indeed obeyed Allah. So obedience to the messenger as you can see in this ayah is paramount, comes first. In addition to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another ayah in Surah An-Nisa as well. Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي شَجَرَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Nay, by your Lord, they will never believe until they make you the final judge in the disputes among themselves. Final judge is the Prophet 
The point is, brothers and sisters, see the idea that we don't need the hadith, we only need Quran. This idea in, implies that we don't have to go to the Prophet, we don't need his sunnah, his, his judgments, his advice. But the Quran itself tells us very clearly otherwise. Allah says, Nay, by your Lord, they will never believe or truly believe until they make you, O Muhammad, the final judge, in the disputes among themselves. The Prophet, he's not alive with us today. So either this verse is outdated, no longer applicable, or it is applicable. If it is outdated and no longer applicable, because the Prophet ﷺ has died and he's no longer with us, then fine, we don't need his sunnah. But the Muslim Ummah have agreed, except for those of course who have deviated. The Muslim Ummah, not just the scholars, have agreed that these ayats are not outdated. They will always remain applicable for all people and all times. And so making the Prophet ﷺ the final judge in our disputes yeah. these days must mean that we have to follow his sunnah. <laughs> so Allah says they will never believe. Remember, these are people who came to believe. Allah says they will never believe until you, O Muhammad, they make you the final judge in their disputes among them. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ this is the second point in the ayah. The first is, they have to make the Prophet ﷺ the final judge. The second is, Allah says, then they should not find any hard feelings, any resistance in their hearts or, their, or themselves against what you have judged or the judgment you have, you have given. Cannot find any resistance to that. You have to accept it in other words. No resistance means you accept it and you surrender to it. So Allah says, then they find no resistance. Haraj. Haraj not only means resistance, but what it means, sort of hard feeling. Because sometimes you accept things, but you're not really pleased with it. Allah says, no, you have to be pleased with it. You shouldn't have any hard feelings or reservations about his judgment. وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمَ this is the third point in the ayah. And that they should submit completely and wholeheartedly. So how would they explain such an ayah? In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very, very clearly informs us that following his messenger and accepting whatever he informs us about is what makes us believers. Allah says they will never believe. La yu'minu. They will never believe. In addition to this also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also very clearly told us in the Quran that part of the mission of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, his mission was to convey the message. But that's only part of his mission. Another part of his mission, while he is conveying Allah's message to the people, is that he, alayhi salam, is supposed to show and demonstrate to the people how it is done. So part of his mission was to explain this message for us. And where do we find his explanation? In the sunnah, subhanallah. Allah says, وَنَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِ وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ Sorry, not نَزَّلْنَا وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And we have revealed this book to you, O Muhammad. Why? So that you may explain, لِتُبَيِّن That you may explain and make clear to the people مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ The revelation that was sent to them. So the Prophet's job was to explain the message, explain the revelation. Where do we find his explanation? No doubt in the hadith or in the sunnah as we say. In addition to this also, we say to such people, where do we get the details of so many things in Islam? Where do we get the details from? They claim we only need Quran. 
The Quran alone is sufficient. We don't need any hadith. So where do we get the details of Salah? How do we pray Salat al-Fajr two rak'ah only? And Salat al-Dhuhr four, and I'm talking about the Fard. And Asr four and Maghrib three. Where do we get these details? How come we pray Salat al-Fajr aloud? The Imam recites aloud, but in Dhuhr, he recites from the Quran silently. In Maghrib and Isha, in the first two rak'ah, it is aloud, but in the third or, or in the last two, it's silent. The details of zakat, the dissolve of gold and the dissolve of silver and animals and whatever else, cattle and so on. The details of siyam, what, what mollifies the, the fast, and on, subhanAllah, all the other details, the details of hajj. Yes, certain things are mentioned in the Quran, but there are many details that were explained to us by the Prophet ﷺ in his statements and his actions and his approvals. And as a result, the Sunnah, brothers and sisters, is indispensable. We cannot do without it, period. Anyone who wants to practice Islam without the Sunnah and only hold on to the Quran, inevitably, they will not do much of what is Islam. Is they have no details. In fact, they may not even pray five times a day. They may say, look, Allah says pray, we pray. The detail of the, the, the specifics of the prayers and the times. And even that, the Quran contains some information about the times that, that could be considered some details. But at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, there are numerous details on many aspects of Islam that can only be found in the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ. And therefore, the sunnah, or the hadith as we call it, is indispensable. We cannot do without it. And this is why the scholars of Islam have said, the sunnah, or the hadith, in relation to the Quran, in terms of miracle, the Quran is above it because the Quran is the words of Allah, the Creator. So the words of a creation cannot match the words of the Creator. Impossible. Incomparable. So when it comes from that perspective, in terms of being miracle, it's the Quran, the words of the Quran that is the miracle, not the Hadith. But when it comes to legislation, ahkam, rules, and legislation, the, the hadith and the Quran are on the same level. They carry the same strength. Both, because both are inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one without the other is unacceptable. It can't work that way. So I hope that inshallah, you know, we would have a clear understanding of this issue. And by the way, following the Quran and Sunnah doesn't mean we do our own interpretation and we don't learn or we don't read and study the wealth of knowledge that our scholars have passed down to us. But that is, that is a, a topic for a different discussion, inshallah. We cannot do away with this knowledge that our scholars have left for us. It is absolutely necessary that we, we, we learn this and we study it. And then maybe we will be in a position to add to it so we can pass it all on to the next generation and so on. So no one today should think, you know what, I, I don't need all these, uh, the fiqh, I can leave that aside. And mashallah, I will do my own uh, ijtihad because you're not going to invite your own new madhab. Right. But like I said, that is a, a discussion, a topic for another time, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May he open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message that he has revealed uh, in the Quran and may he inspire all of us to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause all of us to be among those who will firmly to his revelation, the Quran, and to the sunnah and traditions of his noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may he help us to follow his messenger in a manner uh, that is pleasing to him. May he keep us from the straight path. And forgive for us our mistakes. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.